Beautiful. Okay, well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Adrian Wren with uh, the Oak Park Neighborhood Association president. Um, thank you all for, for joining us this evening. I know we, we already did our intros, uh, but the purpose of tonight's meeting is to talk air quality in Oak Park. Uh, and Simeon knows this, this very well, this topic, uh, of course, is driving, but um, we've uh, actually, in my day job at Valley Vision, um, have been working with Simeon and other organizations to monitor air, and, uh, air quality in Oak Park um, and to work with neighbors to advance air quality solutions uh, and environmental justice uh, solutions uh, that folks come up with um, based on the data we've been collecting. Um, and again, as I said uh, before, you know, this is something I do for my day job. Just privileged to be able to do this uh, in an OPNA context. I'm, I'm on, here on behalf of OPNA tonight. This is something I normally do get paid to do. Um, so I am going to share my screen and we'll get started. And please let me know if you have any questions, uh, anything at all. And this project is called Sacramento Neighborhoods Activating on Air Quality. And I think I'd actually like to start with a question. When you think about air pollution in Oak Park, what do you think of? What, what thing comes to mind most in terms of uh, things of concern from an air pollution context? That's an open question for anyone. Uh, well, oh, go ahead. I was going to say uh, health, uh, asthma, uh, poor quality for minority communities, mm -hmm. um, underlying systematic uh, levers in play um, that don't benefit a certain class of folk versus another class of folk, historical, in historical context. Yep. Well, I mentioned the freeways and all the particles, all the little tire particles that are probably flying around. That's what I think about. Absolutely. I, I, there's a lot of things going on in Oak Park um, insofar as, uh, uh, we do have a large bakery uh, in Oak Park, Bimbo, uh, bread. Uh, we also have two funeral homes, uh, of which both um, omit uh, uh, particles into the air when they're uh, uh, doing their business as well. Uh, and we have a lot of traffic. There's all sorts of things uh, that are happening in the community that we all should be thinking about. Thanks for that. I think that tees up us up well to talk to talk about the specifics. And really the, the reason that we're doing this work is uh, there's, there's a new program at this state level called the Community Air Protection Program. And you actually can see this map um, of the state on the right side. And these are all the specific neighborhoods that the state has designated as really high pollution neighborhoods. Um, where communities are monitoring their air and where this program actually provides them money um, to address pollution concerns and to actually um, create community-led emissions reduction plans that are fundable by the Air Resources Board. And so as you can see, you know, some famous, famous, famously polluted, sadly, neighborhoods are here, including South Central Fresno, West Oakland, right next to the Port of Oakland, Richmond next to the Valero Refinery, or sorry, the Chevron refinery um, and LA next to their ports. Um, and so this is a map actually of, of our area. So as you can see, um, there's this purple outline um, in the South in South Sacramento. That's actually the area that's been designated uh, at AB 617 or a community air protection community by the state of California. Um, so that's the one we have in our region that the state considered to be the most polluted it is along Highway 99. There are a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of traffic density down there. Um, and community members, including that then council member Larry Carr, organized um, to, to have his, his community designated as such. And so the other, that was a successful effort. And there's actual neighborhood associations and small business folks and others who are organizing down there um, with the local air quality management district to monitor their air and to come up with solutions. To their air quality problems. Of course, we have we have slightly different problems, um, but a lot of them, you know, we have we also are right along Highway 99. So there's one similarity. Um, but but just to to uh, share some of these other areas, you know, these shaded areas here are really the three areas that our air quality management district considers to be the highest pollution areas. Um, and when you look at 
tools like Cal Enviro Screen, tools like the Healthy Places Index. Now SMUD has actually a really cool sustainable communities map. Um, these areas do, they, they sadly always appear in red uh, in on the, a lot of those tools. And so they really are uh, high pollution burden areas and also areas that are uh, lower in their socioeconomic status. Uh, so poorer, poorer areas and areas, areas of color. And as Bilele was saying, formerly redlined areas that don't have tree canopy, that don't have a lot of the amenities that some of these other neighborhoods have and because of racist, uh, racist land use policy. So uh, our project is in two of these areas, um, Oak Park Fruit Ridge and North Sacramento. And really what we've been trying to do at Valley Vision where I work um, is work with our partners at Civic Thread, Breathe California and Simeon's group, Green Tech. Um, to uh, work with community members to deploy air monitors. We've deployed almost 20 across both neighborhoods, collect and analyze the data, and then to work with neighbors on solutions. So here's actually a, um, we crunched the numbers on Oak Park. And this, this is not air quality data, but these are other data points that would help, that basically would help us determine, you know, what some of the, what some of the issues are here. Um, and again, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Um, feel free to holler. Um, so as you can see, this is this is Oak Park divided up by census tract. Um, and you can actually see where traffic density is higher, where life expectancy is lower. And basically all these numbers that you see in red mean that we are underperforming compared to the, the Sacramento County average, which is on the right side of the screen. So as you can see, heart disease at 5% or, or almost 8% in the South, in the Lawrence Park area is far, um, uh, you know, it, it compares unfavorably to the Sacramento County average. Uh, Joni, did you have a question? Um, I, was, I, I was just wondering if, uh, if you could uh, send uh, this packet along to folks. Uh, oh, yeah. A little more time to, yeah. Yeah, no, there's a lot here. There's a lot here. And, you know, one really, I think the, the most surprising statistic for me that really, you know, brings it home is looking at the, um, the census tracts in North Oak Park compared to Central Oak Park and looking at a, that six year life expectancy difference. You know, that's pretty scary that you're, you're live basically if you're north of Broadway, 77 years, and if you're south of Broadway, 71 years, you know. Um, so it's statistics like these that really do tell a story and help us think about where we want to monitor our air, but also where we want to focus, you know, focus programs and efforts to, to alleviate some of these issues. So again, I'll, I'll share this with folks and you'll have more time with, with this. Um, and so we, having looked at this data, actually, let's go back to this. What are some areas where you think where you are really want to know where those air monitor, air monitoring, you know, efforts should be should be really centered. You know, looking at this data, where are areas of concern in a park for you? Areas where you want monitored, areas where you think we could do something. Uh, how about how about anywhere that is in the path of of, of flight? you know planes flying over i mean is there a residual fallout from that so like executive airport or sac International yeah in that airport. in that flight path right there yeah coming down you know right over the people yeah gotta wonder yeah, absolutely yeah and i i don't know a ton about the flight paths i do know um our partner partners of ours at united latinos have a an air mon they've been doing air monitoring for lead um along franklin um yeah, Franklin Boulevard and now in Mangan Park to oh. see what some of the, the lead the lead exposure might be. So they're collecting really good data there that could inform our project. And lead is a, uh, you know, leaded fuels are commonly used in small plane engines. Anything else, any other, any other areas that you think would be ripe for, you know, air quality monitoring here? I think it would be interesting to see uh, what's happening with uh, any construction areas uh, that are lifting up not only dust and dirt, uh, but uh, uh, wood um, particles and steel particles and any other uh, construction material. 
So over by Aggie Square uh, would be an interesting uh, find uh, for that. So we we had, we worked with neighbors looking back at that map, and we we determined locations in North Sac and Oak Park for for air monitors, um, ten in each neighborhood. Uh, and if you look down at that the Oak Park area, and we'll zoom in on that in a sec, you'll see where community members wanted them placed. And so, um, if I skip ahead, you'll see it. But um, this is Oak Park, and this is actually a uh, this is a sneak preview of our results. Um, so we placed air monitors. At all these locations, um, uh, they're solar powered uh, Clarity Node S air monitors, um, and they measure for particulate matter and they measure for uh, nitri nitrogen oxide. So, particulate matter is things like car exhaust, um, very fine uh, brake and tire wear, uh, as well as smoke, of course, uh, like wildfire smoke. Um, and it can get the thing about PM 2.5, the 2.5 is the size of it. It means it's very small and it can actually get into your bloodstream. It is so small and cause some really bad, bad health effects. Um, so that's what they measure. And then uh, nitrogen oxide is a precursor to smog, which Simeon uh, coming from LA uh, can attest is, is pretty funky too. Smog is smog and ozone are, are uh, other issues aside from particulate matter that, that are of air pollution concern. So um, in any case, basically the higher the number here, the worse the air quality. And you'll see that South Oak Park um, has the poorest air quality among these readings. And we, and we, part of this project is trying to figure out why, and we currently don't know why. Um, we wanna work with you all to find that out. Um, but, but basically the top number that you see here for each of these air monitors is the mean the, the average reading, the average air quality index reading for that location over one year. So this is over um, basically July to June, July 2021 to June 2022. Okay. Um, so 43 is technically within the, the range of, of, of okay air quality. Over 50 is mo considered moderate. Um, and so as you can see, we do have an over 50 reading uh, on the uh, at air monitor number six, which is right across the street from Oak Ridge Elementary and down the street from Christian Brothers. And so it's concerning that uh, a place where we have a bunch of students is the place with the worst air quality in the neighborhood uh, it, it, in line with our monitoring. Um, so that's one thing of concern. And then of course, we have one at Fruit Ridge Community Collaborative, air monitor number 10, which isn't far off. It's a, it has a 48 AQ, uh, average AQI. And just so you know, if you go and check our air monitor, you know, other air monitors in Richmond or in the Bay Area, their AQI is like three or five or 12. Um, and ours are in the 40s and the 50s. Um, so just so you know, that's because um, all the Bay Area's pollution um, comes over and sits on us. And the Central Valley is kind of a bowl because we have mountains to the east. And so we basically from, from Redding all the way down to Bakersfield, we, we have bad air quality here in the Central Valley. Um, and you can thank our friends in the Bay Area for a lot of that. <laughs> but, but anyway, this, these are, this is basically our big finding after a year of, of where places, uh, places in the neighborhood are that we need to be focusing. Um, do folks have any thoughts or anything surprising about the data? Um, any ideas about um, why this might be? Uh, particularly in South Oak Park, having those higher readings. I had a, I oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh, I had under I had actually read that the the stuff on the freeway kind of floats up a little bit and then and then comes down, <clears throat> so it's not like right next to the freeway. And if that's we know that that's always solid cars there. I don't know if that's it. Yeah, where the prevailing wind is like northeast. So it means basically if you're up and to the right of an intersection, you're going to get a little bit more pollution from that intersection. So up and to the right. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's I think it's really telling when we look at the traffic, uh, in particular for for the day on 99, um, it really does congest uh, starting about Florin Road, 
uh, uh, traveling right to the clover leaf where the the freeways intersect. Uh, so uh, it really it's slows uh, from that area on as well. Uh, and then we have the thoroughfares of Stockton Boulevard again slowing during that and then the Broadway uh, it, it, they really do intersect uh, with uh, some of the higher higher uh, uh, emissions here but it's really concerning you know the 50 to 41 near the school yeah let's go to Katie and then Simeon yeah, I was just um, one thing that came, well, one that is really dis disheartening um, to, to, to see um, that right where we have, you know, our students and some of the youngest people in our neighborhood is they're breathing that in and they're running around on the, you know, the blacktop and that, that worries me. But um, one thing that came to mind, I don't know if this is, came out in your research, is, um, you know, I, I'm not sure how efficient the process is for students who dropped off and picked up. From school and I wonder if having idling cars nearby for long periods of time might aid in that. Yeah, that's a, that's a solution and, and we'll talk solutions, but I'm glad you brought that up. Simeon, did you have something? Yeah, sure. So, you know, I think what was mentioned um, about the freeways and the high emissions is, is absolutely one of the largest reasons, uh, which is why Green Tech is really um, highly into promoting zero emission vehicles. Um, and, you know, I can talk a lot more about that later, but um, I think also uh, South Oak Park in particular has a, a real high rate of pollution and illegal dumping going on um, in, the, in the neighborhood. And then, of course, um, you know, I think Bimbo was mentioned, uh, there's warehouses uh, throughout um, going south uh, towards 47th um, and then uh, the warehouses and uh, other uh, factories going that way. So I think that it's a combination of all those things. Yeah, thank you. Other thoughts about about why we might be seeing these reading these specific readings. Any surprises? Yeah, I'm really surprised at the thirty eight twenty nine and number three. Yeah. And why is it so low there where all of the traffic really converges together? Yeah. As it, do we have a Delta breeze happening there? I mean, I know there are some weather anomalies that, that can cause this, but it, that is incredibly low in, compar in comparison uh, to number six and 10. Yeah, what, one, and, and, I, and I'm, you know, this is just a thought I had when I saw that because I was also really surprised. The highway gets pretty high there. <laughs> it gets pretty elevated. Maybe there's something to that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it flies right over us. That'd be nice. <laughs> the pollution at least. <laughs> we, we can we can wish. <laughs> yeah. uh. Yeah, and so you'll notice, you know, you talk about Aggie Square, we do have that air monitor number two, that's on top of um, Frank Louis building right at on the north northeast corner of of uh, Broadway and Stockton. So, ostensibly that would we you know Aggie Square construction um, emissions would be ideally captured by that so. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, thanks for looking, you know, walking through all that with, with me. Um, I was just going to end up briefly. So, you know, we deployed these monitors. This is what they look like, by the way. Uh, and a couple of you helped out with the deployments. Um, pictures of us deploying them in North SAC. Um, there was a media opportunity that we took, of course, took advantage of that now that, you know, we're offering live air quality monitoring readings. Um, and that is really significant. Uh, because community members can actually go onto our website, uh, and I maybe I'll pull that up. I just want to make sure it's uh, everything's in order. But pull that up, and we could just look at the live readings right now and see what they're looking like, see if they're good or bad or whatever. Um, and then this is a, uh, a curric educational curriculum that we put together um, for students. So 
basically the idea being, you know, let, we got to educate uh, our community and our youth about why air quality matters so that they'll, they'll care about it. Um, and we work with Breakthrough Sacramento, which has uh, just opened a new location here in Oak Park and Green Tech as well. Green Tech uh, taught the curriculum to their students. And here's just a couple images of the, um, the curriculum. Folks built box fan air filters and did some other cool stuff. Um, so there is a way to get involved. So this project, um, after we really crunched the numbers, we started talking to folks about, well, what are some of the solutions here? Um, and we, we actually created packets where neighbors could go and canvas their own community and, and kind of record issues that they saw. Um, and we got some really good feedback on that. We're able to put together, this is just a beginning, but basically on our website that I'll, I'll share the URL soon, we have like one page uh, summaries of, of action plans for each neighborhood, for North Sac and for Oak Park that summarize a lot of the things that people want to see done in terms of in terms of activities. Um, and really the, the purpose of the reason we're doing this is because this CARB, this larger program at the state level, it, it ultimately is going, you know, can either provide funding to a community to do, to do, uh, do the projects that they, that they uh, propose in this, these plans, or if the community wants regulatory authority, if they want someone to, you know, truck reroute uh, out, out, of, out of a facility or a logistics hub, uh, and so that, you know, trucks aren't driving through neighborhoods. If they want, um, you know, an, an emitter to cinch down emissions, that's where things get real political, by the way. Um, if they want um, other regulatory authority, they can build that in and then CARB can consider it in the, in the plan. So these plans are powerful. They're really powerful. And some of those other areas on the state map that you saw have these plans in place and are actually getting tens of millions of dollars from CARB to implement them. So this really is kind of a big play opportunity for the neighborhood um, because we do have these concerning, this concerning data. And if we can organize ourselves and, you know, go to Air Resources Board meetings and talk about this, we can, we can, we can uh, make this into a win for the neighborhood and get the resources we need to address this stuff. So, um, you know, all that is to say, uh, we are starting a new process. We got another grant um, to continue this work. Um, and um, we're actually asking neighbors to join us in experimenting with a participatory budgeting process. And those of you who follow the city of Sacramento government will might be familiar with participatory budgeting, but it's basically where the community decides how to spend a public budget. And um, we have $100,000 we've received from CARB to advance this environmental justice project. And we want residents to be the ones who determine how to spend it. Um, and really what we're, what we're trying to do is build out those action plans, basically take these one pagers and really put more meat on them, have more, you know, have maybe better data analysis, maybe figure out more of, about why um, South Oak Park is having these issues, why our air, our air quality looks like this, and then put together a kind of a meatier set of solutions that more neighbors have chimed in on. Um, and then we have, we have Green Tech on the line with us, and you know Simeon's group um, is tasked with actually doing an emissions reduction pilot. Um, so you know we've talked about uh, monitoring and air monitoring, but we haven't talked about actually reducing uh, uh, pollution. And so this this project will is supposed to reduce pollution. That's the whole point. Um, and Green Tech will be leading that. And I know Simeon, Simeon, you just dropped out uh, and hopped back on. You might be going through the grapevine, um, but uh, in any case, that's, that's the idea, is we want to test out some solutions and, and we want neighbors to help us determine what those, what those might be. Any, any thoughts, anyone interested in, and I have a, a Google form for you if you are interested, but is anyone interested in you know, getting involved in the participatory budgeting and helping us spend this money to advance the, the project? I'm going to stop sharing. I'm curious about students um, participating. Um, I'm actually, I teach English um, and it's a uh, social justice. All my classes are social justice based. Um, so they're actually, um, 
doing, we're actually, I'm doing climate change this semester <laughs> is one of my new classes. And uh, I have been, my daughter actually works for the Air Resources Board. So I've been, um, you know, working out what we're gonna do with that. But, but what they do is they also do a project. Um, they come up, we give them ideas of what they might do as a project to impact the community. Um, is that something that I might be able to do with some students if they were interested to, even if it's just like canvassing or something to get more input on it? Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> let's talk, let's talk more about how we can integrate that. I love it. Cool. Uh, Belaley says, interested in participating, awesome. And then rooftop greening initiatives. Um, could you could you kind of clarify what that might look like? Is that like growing growing urban gardens on your roof? Uh, like, uh, sorry, I'm over here. Like, type. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, it seems like there's a there's a lot of um, places in Finland and Greenland and and probably Portland as well, where people are taking up a lot of this blacktop space on rooftops and retrofitting it to have a cooler, um, you know, cooling effect and also a, a cleansing effect in our cities. Um, and I just always thought it'd be amazing to have kind of like an engineering architectural firm of sorts start prototyping and developing projects, maybe UC Davis or something, um, where they can start developing certain grasses or plant life that would be really easy for people to create models on their rooftops to deal with a lot of this trapped heat and pollution um, stuff. You know, I'm here, there's a lot of mushroom stuff as well that breaks down a lot of the pollution. So just, just wondering if there are initiatives out there or if people are tracking this stuff for Sacramento. It always feels like we're kind of caught flat-footed in the in in the lead of awesome initiatives or thinking around the corner about stuff kind of makes me crazy <laughs> that's my two cents that's what i was thinking if that makes sense yeah joni did you have a thought uh yeah i, I was kind of thinking about uh, again construction um uh, both uh, uh residential and commercial um in Many places, folks are just placing grass and non-perennial uh, uh, plantage. Uh, so it's difficult when you don't have um, uh, plants that are local, locally grown, and they need a lot of water. So I think having some uh, local legislation on uh, having that type of 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 planting and things like that that are low maintenance as well as low water uh plants would be helpful in reducing uh uh the issues around uh emissions and uh, and other other things um most definitely so yeah yeah and and i actually want to share my screen and show you guys something because this is this is something I stumbled upon just the other day, and it's a new study about road pollution and uh, a pilot in uh, actually in the UK where they found that urban greening near playgrounds reduced emissions by, check this out, um, you know, they had multiple studies, 49% of black carbon reduction, 46% and then 26% of particulate matter, mm -hmm. you know, just by planting these green or this greenery near their, um, you know, near their uh, playgrounds, you know, so this is an example of something that is a heck of a lot cheaper than EV chargers, you know, or, or other, or other thing, clean air investments that could really make a difference. Um, and, and it's things like this that, you know, there's just more research starting to come out you know, uh, about this kind of stuff that we should be maybe paying attention to. I know I'd be super supportive of, you know, saying, hey, look at the, these readings near Oak Ridge Elementary or Christian Brothers. We need to plant, you know, do urban greening here. Give us money to do it. 
right? <clears throat> so these are these are just examples examples of things that we can be thinking about in terms of in terms of solutions, um, uh, things that we can push for. So I put in, and I, I know um, uh, for those who are interested, I did put a link to the survey in the chat. So basically what the survey is, is, is a way for you to say that you want to be involved in this project. Um, there are some of the questions, there's kind of two key ones. One is, um, would you like to basically help us design this participatory budgeting framework? You know, how are decisions going to get made about spending this money? Um, and, and how do we account for uh, different things? Um, so that's one way to get involved. And then the other way to get involved is if you're a resident, you can um, fill, fill that out and, and express interest in being a resident decision maker. So one of the people that actually votes um, on how to spend the money. So there's the people designing the process and that you could be from any neighborhood. You, can, you don't have to live in Oak Park to do that, uh, but you do have to live in the neighborhood um, to be a resident decision maker. So and then you can also check, I just want to stay in, engaged and get emails um, and stay in the loop. So, so make sure you do that um, if you're interested in staying involved. So and thanks, Rosalie. Are there any questions about, and so our next steps are really designing that process for spending money. Um, and then, uh, you know, later in this project, it will, of course, be building out, working with neighbors to build out the strategies. Green Tech will be piloting a, an emissions reduction pilot. So once we work with neighbors to figure out what that might look like, you know, maybe it is urban greening, maybe it's something else. Uh, we won't be the decision makers on that because we're the project team. Uh, we'll leave it to you all to make that decision. Um, then that'll be, that'll be something we can actually do to improve air quality here. So it's not just monitoring, which is, which is, excites me at least. Okay, great. Um, uh... Adrian, just wondering if you could uh, shoot off maybe a list of things that you might uh, would like to see uh, District 5 be involved with in, uh, so I could forward that on to Jay. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. And, and we, did, uh, we did do meetings, like update meetings with, with Jay for D5 and Sean Lilloy for North SAC and then Phil Cerna, just to let them know about the work. Okay, great, thank you. So again, if you're interested in participating, I'm gonna put the survey in the chat one more time and please respond to that because um, that's the easiest way to kind of know where you wanna plug in and, and get in touch with you. And really it's actually gonna be um, our, our partners at Civic Threads. Some of you might know Kiara Reed. Um, I know she used to be on your board, Simeon. Um, and Kiara's organization, Civic Threads, is a wonderful nonprofit. It's gonna be leading the participatory budgeting process um, so that's really exciting um, to have them design, design, help with, you know, with neighbors design this, this framework. And then Valley Vision, where I work, we're going to be the ones on the back end of the participatory budgeting. So we're going to do the less exciting, you know, cutting checks and doing what we're told in, in terms of the participatory budgeting outcomes. So that's going to be our job. But someone's got to do it. So. <laughs> Um, any, any other questions before we just move on to uh, other announcements? Um, anything at all about the project? All right, well, with that, let's um, hear from folks about any, any upcoming events that they'd like to highlight um, or opportunities for volunteers or other things going on. Thank you, Katie. Any announcements folks want to share? Any events? I know what I can do. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Robin Hi there. With the Hi, Robin with the Assembly Member Kevin McCarty's office. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody who came out for our backpack drive. It was a huge success. We were down at San Miguel. We were serving the Oak Park community, and we got 500 backpacks out to kids in needs before school started. So I was very, very excited about that. We had a lot of fun. A lot of kids got vaccines and they got dental screenings and got to enjoy some lunch on the food truck there. So thank you guys so much for participating in that. 
And just want to let everybody know that I'm around. If you have any questions about state resources, um, legislation, budget, um, or you need assistance connecting with state agencies, I'll put my information in the chat and you guys can reach out to our office. And also, if you have any events coming up in the Oak Park community, please feel free to send those to my, my email address and um, we will be seeing you out there in the community. I always love attending your events and seeing you guys out there. So thanks so much for inviting me again. It was great seeing you. You were at Celebrate Oak Park, right? Yes, uh, yes. Great, great, great seeing you. Yeah, that was fun. Very <laughs> fun. Yeah. Other announcements, things people want to share. Well, I have something. Uh, let me see if I can share it. There we go. Um, so as folks know, we've been, you know, informing people about the closure of the Sacramento Food Bank. It's really not closure, but the consolidation of the food bank to North Sacramento. Um, and uh, just wanted to give a general update, you know, that the buildings are up for sale. Um, I know uh, at our last meet, at our last OPNA meeting, we did have um, Council Member Chenier and Food Bank CEO Blake Young join us, who just shared that they actually here, Assembly Member Cardi's office was one of the the folks that were taken on a tour along with the SETA, the Sacramento Employment Training Agency, and the library. So um, just know that uh, Jay's office and the food bank and others are working to get, um, uh, explore the possibility of different tenants. And um, we did, of course, do a survey of neighbors to, um, to ask folks what their preferences were in terms of use of those buildings. And really the top five selections in, in this order were affordable housing, um, library, uh, public library rather, uh, mixed use development, a jobs or social services center, or a food hall slash grocery store. So those were really the, the top five selections from our, our survey of residents. And we shared that with, uh, uh, with, with the council office and the food bank uh, staff. Any questions about that or anything else to add on the food bank topic? And I'm just sharing our most recent newsletter. Um, and then of course we had our wonderful Celebrate Oak Park event. So here are some photos from that. We had over a thousand people come to McClatchy Park, uh, early, I guess it's last month now, because today's September 1st. We, yeah, it was a free barbecue. We had some fun music and other, other great stuff. It was a great time and it was good to see people who I think many of whom hadn't seen each other since, since before the pandemic. So it was good to come together. And uh, we really look forward to doing this event uh, next year, uh, bigger and better, of course. So thanks for those who came. Um, just wanna call out on September 9th at Immaculate Conception, there's a really cool career uh, fair and block party it's being organized by um, the building trades folks. So you'll actually be able to, you know, those who are looking for jobs, uh, will be able to meet and greet um, with people who uh, have really high road, well-paid jobs in, in the trades um, and a really good just hiring opportunity for those, those who are interested. And I believe there's free food and music and all sorts of fun stuff. So that's great. Um, Aggie Square updates. Uh, so we, you know, in our newsletter, always share Aggie Square updates as we receive them. And um, there was a, a, a good meeting that we went to uh, that we attended in person around workforce development planning. Um, so do encourage you to go to the, I can maybe grab the link here and put it in the chat uh, for everyone so you all can check that out. Um, Oak Park Black Film Festival. This is coming up in just a few days, actually, at the Guild. Um, so I believe if you go to their website, you'll see the whole schedule, but they have several films, panels, all sorts of great stuff going on um, from, from Black uh, film creators, uh, both in the neighborhood and from elsewhere. Um, incur we encourage folks to participate in the Transportation Priorities Plan. Um, we did, as, as some of you know, um, there was a woman who uh, was killed by a, a vehicle um, just a few evenings ago. Uh, on Broadway between 37th and MLK. Um, and, um, you know, just really horrifying and tragic. And another another example of the need for us to um, 
that invest more, you know, smartly in our roadways and in making them safer for everyone. So um, this is a really good way where you can plug into trying to improve our, our transportation systems. Um, and I will put the link in the chat to this as well. This is the, the transportation priorities plan um, that the city's putting together. Um, and then some exciting news about 34th Street. So it's getting completely repaved, bike lanes added and more um, starting actually on Tuesday, I believe. Um, and so that's that's really cool. It's gonna go all the way from Apache Park to Truckee Way, almost to Highway 50. Um, so that'll be completely repaved and, and it, it needs it. So uh, <laughs> that'll be nice. Uh, and of course, we're supporters of the you know, Oak Park Library, the return of a library to our neighborhood. Uh, you all can sign the petition uh, and get, get vaccinated. Uh, I know there's, there's now uh, bo additional boosters coming out. Just make sure that you're, you're on top of your shots, um, considering that uh, you never know what's going to happen with COVID. And um, yeah, yeah, protect yourself, protect your health, protect your family and friends. Any other announcements, things people want to share? All right, folks. Well, appreciate the time. I know we had a small group today and some, some Zooming. So, so unfortunately, people who might have wanted to join late couldn't get in, but um, that's okay. We, we did record this meeting and we'll make it available on YouTube. Uh, and we do look forward to eventually having in-person events. Uh, another reason to get up on your shots um, because you can't have Zoom issues when, uh, when, you're, when you're in person. Uh, and uh, we do miss the days of, of having happy, you know, a whole bunch of happy takeout and a whole bunch of uh, yummy food uh, that we all get to share. So uh, we look forward to that. So we'll let you know when we can, when we can make that arrangement with the community center when it's, when it's safe to do so. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you again for joining. We will see you all later and have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. You have thank a good you. Thursday. Too. Yes. Thank you. Right. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Adrian. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.